know, I've been looking in this dictionary, and there must be 200,000 words in here, and there are probably at least 2,000 words that would be good to name a car after. You know, like Malibu, Mustang, Cobra. But it appears that Korean car manufacturers like Kia and Hyundai don't read the dictionary much because they come up with these car names that, well, you know, like Azira and Equus. What do those words mean? I don't find those in here. Now Kia has given us another one, the Kia Nero. That's not in the dictionary either. But being the culturally aware person that I am, <clears throat> I do happen to know that is a French word. It applies to musicians who play bad rap. I'm serious. Look it up. Maybe that's where Toyota got the Prius name, a Bulgarian that plays bad rap. Okay, now that we're done with the cultural language lessons, let's get to the vehicle. And the Kia Niro is their new hybrid SUV. About 15 to 20 years ago, SUVs are basically pickup trucks with a roof and a higher price tag. But trucks are heavy, use a lot of gas, so now manufacturers are switching over to car platforms that save weight, up to a thousand pounds on mid-sized vehicles. These car-based SUVs are called crossovers, and Kia is calling this an SUV crossover in their advertisements and websites. Almost all of the crossover SUVs on the market still retain the high ground clearance of a truck for driving off-road and usually offer an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive system for better traction in snow, sand, or mud. In the case of the Nero, there are no all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive options listed on their website as of yet. And as far as ground clearance goes, you can see it's about the same as any conventional passenger car. This particular Nero comes with the optional 18-inch wheels, which causes it to sit about an inch higher than the standard Nero, which comes with smaller wheels. But even so, there's not enough ground clearance here to go off-roading. If you do, you'll have to tread lightly because there's not much room under there. From my perspective, this isn't really an SUV. It's a passenger car with a hatchback, or as some people might call it a station wagon. But Kia wants it to be marketed as an SUV, so in this video we'll be referring to it as such. All right, let's get to the important issue, the main one, and that is the fuel economy. Because you're buying a hybrid, you want fuel economy, right? And the problem with the most YouTube videos and magazine articles that test hybrids is about 95% of them always tell you the EPA fuel economy rating on the window sticker. They never tell you what they got in the real world. That's usually because most hybrids don't meet the standards on the window. In the real world, they get a lot less, and the testers don't want to say anything because they're afraid the manufacturer is going to get mad. We don't do that here. We test real-world fuel economy, and that's what you're going to get here. The fuel economy on the window sticker says 46 city, 40 highway, and 43 average. Sounds reasonable enough. In three days of driving, I put about 100 miles on this rig. The first day I was doing some heavy city driving and temperatures of over 100 degrees. The computer showed 38 mpg. Then I did a 40 mile expressway trip to go have dinner somewhere. The computer popped up to 41 mpg. And then driving today, so let's see what the computer says in three days of mixed city and expressway driving. Here we go, 100 miles of mixed commuting. 39.5 mpg, not that far off from the 43 mpg claimed on the window sticker. We'll be doing a lot more driving before this test is done, so stay tuned. Because according to the computer, we still have 368 miles of fuel left. No point in letting it go to waste, right? Getting to the mechanics, this is a six-speed automatic transmission. Not a CVT, thank goodness. A real six-speed, six gears. If you put the transmission in drive and shift it to the left, there's a sport mode for more brisk driving. But we're going to use the standard drive mode for this test. I'm not in a hurry. That transmission is hooked to an electric motor buried down there somewhere that puts out 43 horsepower. Which in turn is hooked up to this 1.6 liter gasoline engine for a total of 139 horsepower. The base lightweight Nero 
weighs around 3,100 pounds. This one's the deluxe touring model. More money, more weight. Runs around 3,300 pounds. Because it's loaded up with all the luxury stuff we don't need to buy anyway. And of course, you're interested in price as well. The fuel economy, the base Nero starts around $23,000. This deluxe touring. Well, here you go. Starts around $29,000. Got some options here. That brings us to the bottom line. What a deal. Before we do any driving, there's something you need to know about hybrids, and they're very sensitive about outside temperature. For example, I've driven tons and tons of Priuses and Honda hybrids, and in mild weather, say 60 to 85 degrees, it was averaging around 40 to 41 MPG, which is about what other people were getting. But when the weather came out in the summertime, where it's 115 degrees outside, heavy traffic, they were dropping as low as 32 to 33 MPG. Hybrids don't like extreme heat. Furthermore, when I took those exact same vehicles to the mountains when it was cool at night, say around 40 degrees, mileage jumped up to around 42, 43. And in this particular case, I'm telling you this because it's the middle of July, almost going into August, in the desert, and the weekly temperatures have been running around 100 to 118 degrees. But today it's raining, so we're down, we'll probably see about 95. Whoopee. So considering the hot weather we're having, I'm kind of impressed with this 39 MPG I'm getting. I was expecting a lot less. We'll see if we make it a lot better. For those of you who watch my videos and those of you who don't, the first thing we always do when we get a vehicle is take the headlights out in the dark, see how they perform. So let's get this on the road and we'll do that right now. I think it's dark enough, so let's uh, try these headlights out see what happens here we have the low beam setting on a wall 100 feet away very bright not very high but good enough for city use now we're going to high beam plenty of light here this building is exactly 300 feet away we have the high beams on lights up very well no complaints here go to low beam doesn't quite make it, but it doesn't need to for city driving, and the lights are pretty bright. So no complaints with the system here. I'm told the steering is electric, and it feels like it. it really has no feel, no feedback, no precision. Kind of like driving a UPS truck. But this isn't a sports car. You're buying this for transportation. And it's light. So it's really nothing to complain about in this particular vehicle. Doing a 0 to 60 run on a hybrid seems kind of pointless, but hey, we're here, so let's see what happens when we push the gas pedal down. If you hear any strange noises, that's because I have a bunch of boxes in the back that will be sliding around when I'm doing the acceleration braking and cornering tests. It's not the car. This transmission does have a manual shift override, but I'm not going to cheat. We'll just go in the automatic mode. About a second of lag off the line, but once it picks up, not too bad. Now we're really moving. Not too bad. The brakes are firm enough. As with all the vehicles we get, we're going to test the ride quality on these speed bumps doing 25 to 35 miles per hour. Let's get that rolling. Here comes bump number one. Noisy, but impact wasn't that bad. Number two, sounds worse than it is. Number three, but here comes the big nasty one right here. Ah, that was a loud one, but it absorbed the impact pretty good. I'm not going to spend too much time covering the cabin because this is more of a performance test, but since we're in here, we'll do a quick look. Nice gauge cluster, extra large controls on the bottom left dash, idiot proof controls for the climate, simple to use controls for the navigation and stereo system, 
screen isn't the biggest, but large enough. Glove box has enough room if you take out those owner's manuals that take out half the space and toss them in the back somewhere. I don't think the heated steering wheel and heated seats are going to be very welcome in this hot weather we're having, but I see on the bottom we have air-conditioned seats, so I'll have to get those turned on pretty soon. And yes, the rear seats do fold down to increase storage space. Well, it's an SUV, right? So it has to. Okay, we've got 316 miles to run out. Let's see if we can uh, get some better fuel economy off this. We're going to take a long highway trip. Get out of this heat. It's 109 degrees right now. Anywhere it's got to be cooler than this. I'm surprised that a car with such low horsepower does such a great job of climbing these hills. Obviously the torque from the battery system. Impressive. Interesting information about the driving style. 12% aggressive. My, my. Just a note, hybrid cars work better in city traffic or mixed driving because the battery system can assist the engine in those environments. On the highway, the hybrid system pretty much shuts down unless you're passing or climbing. I doubt very seriously we're going to get anywhere near 40 mpg. I'm thinking more around 35, 36, but we'll see. I don't mind the free wash job, but these 40 mile per hour winds are something else. Amazingly, the car is not being pushed all over the road. I'm surprised. We're wrapping up our 200 mile highway trip. Average fuel economy just under 36 mpg. Around 4 mpg less than what's on the window sticker. Not bad considering. There's some interesting information on this price sticker you might want to know about if you're a potential buyer. First of all, this is a genuine Korea car made in Korea, not in some third world country, which explains the excellent quality control. 95% to be exact. Number two, not only do you get a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty on the engine, you get a 10 year 100,000 mile on the hybrid system, the electric motor and the battery. That could save you a couple thousand bucks in a repair. And here's the most interesting part, this little box where the EPA and Department of Transportation classifies what type of vehicle this is. For example, here we have an Acura compact SUV. So in the corner, they tell you it's an SUV. But on the Nero Touring, they don't call it an SUV, they call it a station wagon, which is a car, not an SUV. I mention this because insurance companies usually have different rates for station wagons, cars, and SUVs. So you might want to call your insurance agent and see if they consider the Nero an SUV or station wagon. Might save you some money. Here's my take on the Kia Nero. If you're looking for an SUV with ground clearance or four-wheel drive traction, you're not going to find it here. On the other hand, if you're looking for an economical vehicle with a hatchback rear end for hauling gear, you might want to give this one a look. And if the $32,000 price tag is too high, again, a reminder that they do make a more economical version for around twenty four dollars Which is probably the one I would go for, but that's me. A few months ago, we did a video test on my favorite Kia. The Soul with a new turbocharged engine. Very, very pleasant car to drive, and it costs less than the Sniro. You'd like to watch that video test, get on the link, we'll show you. It's really a nice car.